This ma this is definitely going to be a bit of a clash of playstyle right now uh, between these two teams. You know, obviously going to be seeing the Quarantine Crusaders going very much for a team fight style, right? Abusing that Tempest support with the Necromancer, the Revenant. Uh, to take those 3v3s and 4v4s. And, and we're going to have to see Force or Face or rotate around that because I very much doubt they'll be able to uh, effectively uh, take some of these team fights uh, really into the Quarantine Crusaders from Force or Face. It's going to be very, very difficult for them to do that. Now, of course, the Quarantine Crusaders will be prepared for that kind of rotational play. They have access to the Thief. They have access to a Ranger uh, on the side nodes there as well. So yeah, this will be very interesting to see how this plays out. But I, I think it will certainly be a very tough match uh, for Force or face roll they're going to have to play extremely well if they want to be able to actually handle this here absolutely and of course coming in with a last minute sub is never ideal mm. for you especially at a you know in a game like this but we'll have to see what happens if any team is going to be able to adapt with it it will be but either way that's neither here nor there let's get ready to watch the first match of this tournament boys and girls sig going to be aggressed on out of self a little bit but we're not going to see forceful face roll really do too much of that dust amados and stealth still attempting to go for the decap of course sorry will be there to stop it but so far mid not really touched too much by blue team until andre and sig begin to move over there yeah we'll see a team fight begin to brew we're, we're certainly going to see that a lot. I think uh, a lot of things you're going to see in this game are kind of come down to actually Andreas uh, and Sig taking kind of 2v3s and outnumbered fights on the Condi Rev Tempest. A very difficult duo to break. Like almost in a way reminiscent of the Firebrand Scourge days in a way, I think. Like the very difficult classes to actually eliminate and able to competently take 2v3 matchups. Uh, and hold out until the team, uh, the, the, the quarantine crusaders, will be able to rotate to compensate for that. Uh, but so far, we actually do see Force of Face Roll doing a good job of contesting all three of these nodes. Actually looking to pick up a kill. Uh, they haven't managed to find one yet, but uh, sorry, certainly getting very, very pressured here. Um, uh, a little bit there from uh, DOS and also from Waikiki. But uh, Feros is also here, Feifei, here to at least counter pressure. And actually now looking to turn that around and get a kill on this Dragon Hunter. Yeah, I, I don't really think this is a great 2v2 for first face of force, forceful face roll, excuse me, and I, I'm kind of surprised we see them staying here for so long. I think the only reason they really are is just because they're trying to contest it. Uh, it is interesting that we do see the plus in, in ways coming out from the Necro, although she's actually going to be pretty low now as Azadome comes back in off of mid, instead of having the Thief come in here, but regardless, they have held the node long enough. Andre coming back in off of mid now as well, as they do see... Obviously, their neck are getting a bit low. Stranger is going to go down, but Azerdome with the Shatter Refuge is going to be able to get him back up. And, and I expect to see the red team leaving this node uh, as they haven't really been able to crack mid yet. And again, the main thing here to look at is going to be Dragon Hunter cooldowns. Once he runs out of cooldowns, there's not going to be a lot of opportunity for him to really do much. And I actually don't really like the fact that he's staying here in this 1v1, sorry, either, because since it's her node. Exactly, and you know, it's certainly a very slow game to start things off, right? Both teams just trying to find that vulnerability and actually get a kill. We haven't seen any kills so far in this entire game, I believe, and I think the kind of the first one that lands is going to be a really, really big deal indeed. And uh, and I, th I think you know, you might see just you start to see a little bit of instability come up here because we have these objectives uh, now coming through here: the Sword of Reaping and also the Sword of Life. Bit of a typo there, but don't worry about that. I'm sure I'll have that addressed at some point. These shields, both of swords life, now. In fact. Uh, both swords but uh there you go we in fact have the the, the shield of life and we're obviously going to see players go for this right these are some very very potent buffs for the team right like massively increasing your ability to take effective fights about the map and engage with the enemy team uh so it is going to be very very important uh to go for that at some point and that will actually force these teams to kind of play the map a little bit more and do something well, already we actually see force of face or grabbing the shield immediately and the sword too that could give them the edge they need to actually kind of crack the egg uh of quarantine crusaders who are actually struggling a little bit in this game uh not able to really engage their game plan right they're not able to actually connect um their team fight uh force or face or rotating around it effectively even picking up a kill on death fire there yeah, and you know, it's it's pretty interesting that we have a team with two thieves able to actually so successfully hold down the map. Obviously, mm. the double thief is going to certainly aid them in, in getting both of those buffs, and, and we did see that happen. I think a big part, too, is the fact that Fefe, the necro here for blue team, was out of that middle node team fight for such a long time. It was very hard for them to really gain any ground there. And again, that was kind of part of the reason why I was surprised to see her plussing that instead of the thief. We do see blue team now kind of moving a little bit more together. We see, obviously, Fefe now with Andre rotating in. But again, they're going to leave the necro here, having a lot of trouble with that dragon hunter. Uh, into the Ranger 1v1, which is kind of surprising. Sig left 1v2, though, over at mid, almost going down here uh, against the Thief and the Druid. And right now, the main thing that I'm seeing is just Red Team are rotating 
a lot better than blue team are. And also the fact that blue team are playing for triple node pressure instead of just going for a double node, uh, which I believe their comp would aid in a lot better with that that support tempest, that sort of team fight that they've gone for here. Yeah, and I think that you know we we certainly do see Forceful Face or taking a little bit of lead in the in uh, in the game so far. However, this is kind of their win condition, right? If the map stays quite unstable, they win the game off this. But we do now see Quarantine Critters being able to get a two cap here, uh, and that gives them significant map advantage. If we see them actually able to lock down two nodes, then that is their win condition, right? With that team fight, uh, that team fight style that they have, if they're able to actually hold that map, get their classes bunker down on it, they should be able to pretty convincingly take the map and hold it from that uh, from their own. And actually, getting a kill on this druid, a very annoying class to play into. You know, uh, we were talking about how you don't see it very often, but honestly, you don't want to see it very often. I think uh, is also an operative thing as well. And Sorry does also get traded out there, so both rangers are now fully dead. Ranger confirmed trash class, I suppose, uh, by the looks of that. But, you know, it's kind of an even trade there on both teams. But, you know, once again, like Force of Facial looking to hold on to that lead, but losing their condition Revenant in Belzadar. Now, that is a very, very heavy blow, I think, uh, for them. As I'm going to go for the res. Yeah, he, he actually almost gets pretty close to it. He's going to be boarding back to the node. Mike at the decap now. Dust is going to be able to prevent that from happening. So Belzadar will be taken out. And, you know, I mean, so far, the rotations here from both from red team don't really surprise me they're they're mostly just trying to avoid the team fight and so far they've done a pretty good job the last few moments though blue team have gotten a couple of kills they've done a much better job of locking those kills down and again i think if they're able to put themselves in this position where they can control two nodes it'll be a lot better for them instead of trying to push onto that third node and, and they really only should go for it if they have kills or their fee thinks he can get a free decap uh we will see the buffs spawning again here we will see top buff almost certainly going to be picked up by red team they get it and bottom buff looking like waikiki stranger is going to be getting that again so again mm. double buffs for red team and we do see blue team trade that out. They have the double node now, and this is this is what they want. We do see their thief potentially going towards far to get a decap, uh, as they will be one versus two on mid here. And I, I really think I'd love to see Quarantine Crusaders just try and hold this double cap here, really pr pressure uh, to kind of force those thieves to fight a little bit more, which would weaken them uh, and give them a little bit of a less advantage on the map. Fefe though is going to be taken out one versus uh, excuse me two versus two here. Waikiki going to be a little bit low. Res is beginning to come out from sorry, but it's not going to be in time for that Reaper buff. And that she's now going to find herself alone on the node. Mid gets decapped oh, as well. We we actually uh, we have a disconnect actually uh, right now. He apparently got um, stuck. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he got stuck. Okay. So that okay. It's not a disconnect. It is actually just a simple relog uh, in that case to try and get back. Yeah, He's back already. Back yeah. And, you know. Yeah. You really hate to see it, guys. That is. I mean, <laughs> trust me. I've been there, done that. I know that one hurts uh, uh, a hell of a lot there, and that's certainly a bit of a disadvantage there for Quarantine Crusaders. But this game is still very much um, all up in the air. I believe. Uh, I, I think one thing that is certainly going extremely well for Force of Facial is picking up those buffs. Every sign we've seen that we have consistently seen um, a kill come out uh, for Force of Facial to actually get that, and it's. Absolutely fantastic of them to have that kind of a map, uh, a map awareness to immediately go for those snipes and immediately go for those very powerful buffs because it is a huge impact. We're talking 20% damage here, a massive increase to health and armor. It absolutely makes the difference. And I also do think that in a way, um, we do see Quarantine Crusaders, as you say, Roy, kind of playing into Force or Face Roll's hands a little bit by going for that three node push, which, you know, you don't really expect from a team composition like Quarantine Crusaders without getting a few kills. Yeah, and, and again, I'm really confused by Deathfire's movements as well on the map. Obviously, he's going to have a little bit of a tough time, a tough game here against two thieves. He's going to have to try to out-rotate two thieves, try to match two thieves, which is, of course, going to be a very, very difficult job for him to do. But consistently, we see Fefe going home uh, to help out the ranger, sorry, instead of the thief, and I really don't understand why. I feel as though the necro should be in the mid-fight. That's where we want to see it. And we see Andre rotating in now, actually, to try and support Sorry as she goes pretty low, obviously. You know, not not a bad idea from Andre either, but that does mean now the support is going to be out of the team fight for Blue. And while we do see a really good decap and now full cap here from Deathfire Far, I feel as though it it's not they're not holding nodes down, and their comp should be doing that, especially into a comp such as the one Red Team is doing. And and we really haven't seen them hold nodes apart from Sorry on the line. We now see Fefe very low. She's basically dead outside of Shroud. Belzadar going to be on top of her stranger is welcoming around. We will see Blue Team get a potentially a triple cap though while Red Team is so focused on there trying is. to bring this Necro down and Andre on top of her at the moment going the for nice support. Lich comes out and Belzadar is now going to go down. Fefe turned that one around. The support from Andre is so good and Red Team have actually thrown this away. 
Yeah, that is a massive swing there to pick up that kill uh, while also maintaining control of the map. It do we do see it get a little bit neutralized. Uh, the dragon is now going to be reclaimed by the ranger here. Uh, the druid from Forceful Hero who has now just respawned. But still, like this is what we we're talking about, right? Like if uh, if Quarantine can just hold on to this, right? Take these mid fights. They've got their Condition Revenant, Condition Herald, Sigurdil, uh holding down mid. We've got Sari uh, on the line as well. That's going to be very difficult for Forceful Faces to actually shift this. They're certainly going to need to go for buffs here. And this is exactly what we see. We see Hero going for the shield, but there is going to be a bit of a fight this time over the sword. They won't be able to get it for free uh, quite so easily. Azadome is going to find himself in a 1v2 situation versus Feifei uh, and Desfire. And I think he might have to give this up as well. Oh, uh, it's actually gonna, oh wow, yeah, actually, well, wow, a bit of a steal there. Azadome not able yeah. to get back up there in time and deny that. And Dest able to completely lock that down and move out once again on the map with the very, very powerful sword buff. Let's see if they can make any good use of it. Nearly just get taken out there by the uh, enemy thief on Azadome, but actually is able to wriggle away there. Uh, while this team fight is raging with the sword buff, it'll be a very, very conclusive victory, I believe, for the quarantine crusaders yeah and you know i actually think the buffs probably help quarantine crusaders a little bit more than they do forceful facial just because again if you're looking to team fight those buffs are going to aid you a lot more obviously the buff is going to help you no matter what but in a, in a straight up team fight it's it's just going to seem as though there's almost an extra player there if you have that buff of course the buffs do go they do split each team so it isn't going to be as big of a decisive uh, benefit there for quarantine crusaders as it might be but certainly taking it away from Forceful face rule who've gotten it every single time is going to be helpful. Andre, again, going to be rotating in from mid to support Sari, who is very low in the note against Belzadar and Dos Tomatos here. Nice CC coming out. They actually might get the decap here. Fefe just able to get it, and Dos Tomatos actually getting knocked down now. Sari will go down state, though, before they can get the damage out. Rez should be able to be coming out here for free. Absolutely will. But that's going to be the RF burn now from Dos Tomatos, who's very low. Fefe still trying to chase. But again, this is why I really wanted to see this thief here. There's just really no chase potential where the Necro, with the Tempest, sorry, forced to stay on the node. So she's not going to be able to lock any damage down and, and follow up with it. And again, we see Fefe now stuck in this 2v2 here, which isn't necessarily a bad 2v2 for Blue Team, but it means the Necro out of the team fight is just not good for them. And while they do still have a lead, they still potentially could go for a decap at far. It puts them in this position that I really don't think they want to be in, and I'm very surprised to see it happening. It's, it's almost as if they think they aren't going to be able to get kills without that Necro on any node. Yeah, absolutely. And there we go. Do you see Belzadar getting eliminated there? Uh, they're going to go for the res, maybe, with Dos Tomatos, but no, not able to do that. They're going to have to back off. That's Stranger now, potentially. Three, two. Uh, maybe getting caught as well. And no, actually, no, it is going to be Stranger going to be disengaging there. Dos is going to try and hold on, but not going to be easy. Uh, to get away with that, actually, uh, whatsoever. And actually, what, the DH kind of holding it up, but actually, my Lich auto attacks, oh my goodness, that really, really hurts right there, indeed. That is quite the painful, uh, the quite the painful attacks there. And that's going to be a very, very big kill. And at this point, as we start to approach the 400 point mark uh, in this game, this is where things really start to get a little bit worrying, right? Like any kind of mistake from either team can really kind of send things spiraling out of control a little bit. Asdome able to grab the shield, but the sword once again falls to the uh, Quarantine Grisers. Deathfire able to grab that pretty quickly. And now they're all looking to converge onto mid. And if they are able to win this single fight, if they're able to pick up one more kill, I think Forceful Face Roll is going to have a very, very difficult time in reclaiming this game. Uh, they need to absolutely play perfectly and get a very, very decisive victory within the next minute or so. Otherwise, they are out of time. Yeah, and something pretty important to note was that that was a two versus three there for Sari and Fefe. And obviously playing it very well. Of course, going in, into the two versus three, potentially with more cooldowns than some of the red team players had. But Azerdome plusing that, I think, might have been a bit of a mistake. I think kind of making that even is a little bit more beneficial, again, with that Necro out of the team fight for Forceful Face Roll. And something else important to note here is this is Forceful Face Roll's map. Nearly nice decap, just to note there by Deathfire Far, uh, which means that they obviously had a bit of a game plan coming into it with this pick. And clearly, so far, it's not going their way, or at least the second half of this game isn't. Uh, Sig going to be aggressed on pretty heavily over at mid, one versus three. That will force the decap. And Andre comes in. He's going to be in sword three pretty low here. Is he going to be able to continue to stay alive? I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Andre should have a glyph available. He's going to be able to get him. And there yeah, it is. He's going to be getting him right back up. So he's going to be alive for now. Glint Heal going to heal him up even more. This will be a two versus four now as Ezredome comes in here as well to plus it. But side nodes still going to be held down. And side nodes aren't actually what Blue Team need to win. Only one node is, is, yeah, is going to be enough to long. put them over the top. And that is going to be game one basically certainly going the way of Quarantine Crusaders. Playing much better in the second half of that match. Uh, especially considering they had a technically a DC there as well. Uh, yeah. Getting stuck in that wall, a big but, comeback. Yeah.
Uh, you know, they, they weren't in an advantageous position for quite a while uh, during that match. They were certainly struggling in the early game, but now they're able to bring that back. And that is going to be game one uh, in the, for the quarantine crusaders. They are able to win that game. And I'll tell you what, Roy, go ahead and entertain the chat. I have a few little things that I need to mess around with. Uh, so let's get the next game. So tell us a little bit about the next map and all that sort of thing. And I have a few issues to try right. and fix. Uh, you know, I, obviously with the last minute sub, Less than ideal for with you know for forceful face rule and, and of course you know I think they played pretty well last match even with that last minute sub even with playing what I would arguably say is not an ideal comp double thief I, I don't think really works that well anymore I don't think we've seen it work for a while uh, and I'd be surprised to see them have much success with it but definitely a lot of strong players I mentioned before uh, but that being said you know Courtney Crusader is definitely a very good team uh, you know they did have a bit of a roster change as well in the weeks or the week or so leading up to the qualifier last week uh, and that certainly did shake you know their comp a little bit their play style a little bit swapping up bland for dust fire there uh the weaver for the thief per se and you know so i, I do think it's definitely interesting that we see quarantine crusaders coming into this when forceful face roll has been the top seed uh between the two teams of course for quite a while uh but i i definitely think we're gonna see the 2-0 here i, I think quarantine crusaders are gonna be moving on and we will see forceful face roll being sent down to the lower bracket um and I would not be surprised to see this map go very heavily in blue team's favor, assuming they play it properly. But let's find out if my predictions are going to be accurate. Game number two, first match here in the Masters of the Arena. It's Quarantine Crusaders up 1-0 over Forceful Face Roll. And it looks like some aggression going to be coming out now for Force, Force, Forceful Face Roll. Having some trouble saying that name onto the waterfall. Yeah, I mean, as you were talking about, right, you know, their best hope here is to absolutely just try and pick up a quick kill, really throw Quarantine Crusaders off, and try and stall out the map for as long as possible by trolling, like forcing a lot of decats with these two thieves. But as you say, you know, it's been a while. Like, I I'm sure you actually recall. Do you remember the time when there were like two DP thieves on every single team in the EU monthly AT? Like, I remember. I believe there was a final. No, I actually have um, blocked that those yeah. memories out from my mind. So I have no idea what you're talking about. Either way, middle. Node at the moment is going to be pushed on very heavily there by Forceful Face Roll. Andre going to be forced to blink away. And he's just going to be Sig now holding the node down. Side nodes going to each team one apiece. That'll be Corey picked up there for red. And Waterfall going away at blue as Crusaders get into mid now. We do see Fefe coming in with Andre coming back in off Waterfall. And again, I, I would be very surprised to see uh, Quarantine Crusaders heading over towards the quarry until they get kills, until their thief thinks he can get a decap. And we see a little bit of a 1v1 going on now between Deathfire and Stranger. It's going to be Shadow Refuge going down. Deathfire a little bit low here. He should have the support. And there's an ICC coming out now from Quarantine Crusaders, but they're unfortunately not able to lock down a kill. They're not going to be able to find anything. But they do get away with the middle node, and that's pretty much all they really need here. Though we will see Thief rotating over now to plus the waterfall, and sorry, he's going to need to be careful. Oh, well, I mean, sorry, she nearly has the 1v1 win, and so that thief is certainly arriving at the right time to save the Dragon Hunter uh, from the embrace of the Ranger. However, uh, Andreas able actually to match that and make sure that that fight does not uh, get too out of control. However, we do see Deathfire actually getting caught on mid. Her a hero going for the stomp doesn't get it uh, because of the port on the thief, but I think that's going to be a very, very difficult res. And, you know, what? we actually see maybe, you know, the I think these guys are looking to maybe troll your prediction here a little bit, Roy. Uh, the first kill, first blood actually goes to forceful face roll, and I think that was certainly a little bit of an unpredictable outcome, especially seeing as we see Feifei incredibly pressured here. Uh, this Necromancer, surely she's not going to be able to survive. No, it looks like she's probably going to go down. We do see the glyph available for Andre, so he should be able to get that res, although there's a lot of CC on top of him. Yeah, she gets knocked back. He, I think he's stuck as well. Wait, you know, what? Oh, no. no, the long oh my knockbacks God. there. What? what are the odds? <laughs> I don't and, yeah, believe it. That's going to be the relog there forced out by Forceful Face Roll uh, Heroin. And we actually see uh, Gornless Hero, the Druid there, on the side of Red Team, he is actually the strongest player in the game. He has actually forced two players, uh, to, to actually relog. They've got to go back to the login screen there. And unfortunately, I don't believe that is going to be a restart, uh, for them. The timer has yeah, gone Yeah, it's going to be two minutes, unfortunately. It has to be two minutes, so we're going to have to see. And uh, there we do, we do have no, the relog, so Andres has now actually been able to rejoin the game. And that is quite an unfortunate bug. But you know what, guys? We're raising awareness. That's what this is. We are raising awareness here live on the stream. Yeah. And now we certainly obviously do see a bit of a map advantage come out of that from Forceful Face Roll. And, uh, you know, even in that previous state, we have not actually seen a kill yet for the Quarantine Crusaders. And there is the three cap uh, for Forceful Face face roll on legacy uh which is yeah. you know we certainly would not have expected that however the 4v5 definitely played into that yeah obviously knocking the support tempest out which is going to be you know a big part of their team fight comp their comp and, and whatnot is going to affect that but you know i wanted to mention this again 
Andre rotating in for mid over towards Waterfall, I think, allowed Forceful Face Roll to actually get the advantage on mid. And I really don't understand why we consistently see the Thief not being the one to rotate. I, I think there's there's two reasons we might see this. Although I'll, I'll hold on to that for just a second as we see Fefe now going in for the Lich on top of Belzador over at Waterfall. Decap will come out for them. They're about 100 points behind now, so they're going to need to make some movements on this map fast. Unfortunately, their Thief getting picked out now at mid is not going to help them. Dust Amato's a little bit pressured out here, but he will be RF available for him as the rotation is now coming in from mid from Forceful Face Roll towards the node, trying to peel out for the Dragon Hunter. Fefe still staying on top of it, but she has to be careful. She's a little bit split now from her Tempest, who's actually getting pressured out very, very hard. He's going to be forced to try to kite back towards his base. He does get the blink away, but he's going to be very low. Doesn't have a lot left. Obsidian Flesh is going to keep him alive for a couple more seconds, but the pressure is still going to be on top of him. He is able to just leave. Oh, he gets pulled out again! He's seen oh. back out the portal. He's going to be able to get back in again to safety, but That's crazy. forceful face roll, putting the pressure on, and Quarantine Crusaders are going to have to respect it. Just Amados is going to be pretty low here coming back in as Andre out of the portal. He's still going to be out of cooldowns, doesn't have a lot left. RF already going to be used up. They're looking for a kill, but again, forceful face roll, able to split up Quarantine Come Crusaders very well. Andre is going to be the first one to go down here in this fight. Stop is coming out now from Stranger. He's going to be the Vapor form coming in and down state. He is going to be able to get out for now, but I don't know if they're going to be able to res that. There's just so much pressure here now from the red team, and they're looking to get the kill and the cleanup. And that will be the crack and the loss team fight now coming out here from Quarantine Crusaders. Hey, side nodes do fall to the Crusaders, and that will start to get them back into this game. But I, I think it is quite remarkable how Forceful Face Roll has been able to effectively take these fights, right? Like, how... I'm, I'm honestly a little bit confused right now, right? Like, the, I mean, with Sig now going down on mid too, like, this is... This is not going, this is not how it should be, I Honestly, don't think, in this game. It's it's very interesting to me because last map, you know, we, we saw, first of all, we saw Quarantine Crusaders get off to a bit of a slow start in the last map as well. Uh, and obviously, the last map allowed them to not lose any points because of that legacy, a much more snowball map. And of course, this this DC essentially from Andre was was very uh, detrimental as well to Quarantine Crusaders. But this map is going to allow Force of Facial to just gain more points quickly, uh, you know, a lot faster than they did on, on Coliseum. So that is going to be a benefit to them. But a slow start here from Quarantine Crusaders and their rotation and their positioning in these team fights is just not impressive to me at all. Again, having the Thief not be the one rotating to match the other Thief, having the Tempest to, to leave that team fight on mid to go and support Sorry, and I think part of it is potentially they just thought she was going to die, or potentially they just didn't trust the Thief to get there in time, or maybe they wanted him to go for the decap far, and that's okay, but again, leaving that team fight just is not good when you have this team fight centered around this Tempest, and I don't really understand it, so I think the rotations definitely need to be looked at here by Quarantine Shaders and fixed up, and, and again, that positioning Ooh. in those team fights as well. Yeah, and another bit of an unfortunate situation there, uh, Deathfire. I think he got the downstate, generate the downstate onto uh, Azadome there, but he actually ended up getting sniped himself and then fully eliminated. Belzadar now is going to go on mid, and I don't think Hero's going to be able to res that. Actually, Stranger and Azadome. Wait, do they actually get... Oh, no. Oh, they actually get that. That is a fantastic res for Forceful Face Roll. And, wow, they're now 200 points ahead, and they're looking to try and force this fight here on mid. Uh, the... Condition Harold Belzar is in a little bit of trouble, but sorry, getting forced away uh, by Doss uh, and also by Stranger there as well. Like the block is up for sorry, so she'll be okay for a bit now. Andre coming in there to at least resustain the Ranger uh, for a little while at least, but I mean, they're just too split up right now. Like the Necromancer away from the Tempest, the you know the the Tempest for being forced to rotate almost onto the sides. Like they're just not able to effectively take these fights. They're just getting picked apart right now by forceful face roll. Yeah, and again, it, it just, Deathfire going far is fine. Him getting the decap there is fine, and Azurdome actually not going to be contesting that, it looks like. Oh, I believe it's just the stealth from Deathfire. He decides to uh, to leave it and allow him to get that free cap if he wants to, and instead he's going to go and plus Fefe, who's going to be very, very low at mid. Andre coming back in from Waterfall is going to be able to support her for now. She's just able to stay alive. The Fleshworm going to be interrupted, though, so she's going to be forced to go into the Shroud. This is what Quarantine Crusaders want. They want this team fight, and they're starting to get some pressure in, into some CC there on to Forceful Face Roll, but it's not going to be enough. Fefe going to go down, and this is an outnumbered fight as well for Forceful Face Roll at the moment. However, we are going to see the uh, Quarantine Crusaders begin to go for the res there. there they is. get the we'll glyph. They get back up there, the glyph. A lot of low health bars there from Forceful Facial. But again, the, the points, the maps, just nowhere near in Quarantine Crusaders' favor. And I have I have to go back to this, this Thieves' rotation and as well as the Tempest. We, we saw this team on an A run with the Tempest support and without a Necro, and it didn't work very well for them. They had a lot of trouble in these team fights. It's almost as if that's what this is happening right now for Quarantine Crusaders. Is we about to see Deathfire, potentially sorry over at Waterfall go down as well. Deathfire very, very low in roads away from middle node. Andre there is gonna be able to deal for him in stealth. But again, we just this team fight isn't happening at the moment for Quarantine Crusaders, and I really don't understand the point. We're gonna see the Druid picked up in roads as well, as Azadome attempts to deal for him, but is not gonna be able to. We're going to see Corey, though, will be picked up there by Stranger. And that's why no way he can go in for the contest there. 
That's a good kill onto Hero, but there's just not enough time left in this game, really, for, for Quarantine Crusaders to be able to recontrol the map. And, and even if, suppose even there was enough time, suppose they were even ahead at this point. And look at the kill count here. Like, there are eight kills for Forceful Face Roll, only one so far for Quarantine Crusaders. Like, we just haven't been seeing kills get secured, and that's just not what you'd expect on a map like this. Obviously, uh, the disconnect would, would obviously kind of put a bit of a, a bit of a shutdown on the initial teamfight push from the Quarantine Crusaders, but matter. they haven't been able to recover it. They haven't been able to find their rhythm again and start getting kills and start taking these fights. I think it's certainly well played by Force of Face to kind of rotate, really split up the Crusaders um, and move around the map in a way that allows them to take effective fights, get kills, and deny the quarantine crusades for getting to their win condition and you know excuse me if i'm being a little bit too critical here but i actually don't think forceful face will really do any doing anything that special they've had Corey capped up for most of this game uh, and that's okay honestly it really doesn't matter that much you see sorry picked up here now at waterfall maybe a glyph here from andre which he will be able to get it and they'll probably be able to continue to fight into this but you know i think the only thing that 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 really quarantine crusaders needs to do is just Play the two nodes and have the thief go home. I, I haven't seen Deathfire plus Sari a single time. And I really don't understand this because they're they're just they're allowing forceful face roll to completely nullify any team fight value that Quarantine Crusaders could have right now. Uh, and they haven't been able to team fight at all. Again, consistently sending that Tempest home. The only reason they should do that is if they are forced to go for a glyph res on Sari, but they won't need to do that if their thief just leaves earlier. And if they're worried about being able to fight outnumbered and, and win outnumbered fights, then that means that they shouldn't be playing this team fight comp in the first place. And they shouldn't be going for this comp and they should be able to go for something, you know, that rotates more. But that's not what they're playing and they're not catering to their comp at all. We now see Ferios, again, going in towards Waterfall after Sari's already died. There's just no value here. They're allowing themselves to just com completely out rotated by forceful face rule. They're not going for team fights, which again is what they should be doing with a, a, a Condi Rev, a Necro, a Tempest. And we don't see that at all. The Thief right now can't really do anything because he's not going to be able to consistently get decaps and caps at far. He's always going to be out rotated there. And he's just not getting any value by not going home at all. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I think they may be concerned that the Dragon Hunter is quite difficult to plus into for the Condi Thief. It can be quite resistant to conditions. Um, but, you know, it, at the end of the day, you'll still be able to at least force the cap uh, onto onto basically any class on a thief, right, when you go for that plus. And we don't now see the game is going to be ending uh, in just a few moments there. And Force or Face are going to bring this back to a 1-1. One -one. And we are actually going to be going to our final uh, map of the series already going to a full best of three here on day one and well i mean will quarantine says be able to actually kind of recombobulate themselves i think uh, i i certainly think that um you can certainly uh, get a little bit thrown off and a little bit tilted by something like that happening right that's that is really unfortunate right to, to get stuck uh, in terrain is incredibly unfortunate um if that is if that is able to happen you know that's you obviously is going to maybe piss you off and there might be a little bit of frustration uh going into that game uh potentially and hopefully they're able to kind of reset cool off and just go into this one strong because this is once again um I, I would consider this a very good map for the quarantine crusaders actually uh, obviously the bell mechanic is going to come into play and it, it actually could hurt forceful face roll uh, excuse me quarantine crusaders a little bit as well depending on how kills are looking at that time depending on how forceful face roll rotates around it but it potentially you know just the same it could go in favor of quarantine crusaders but about this ranger build uh so before she was actually in valkyrie amulet and she was also playing more of a duelist build this build here uh, i believe is going to be aimed more for a having a little bit more ability to survive as you said against condition pressure the condi thief uh but also being able to hold on to the cap force that whoever she's fighting away from the node immobilize them off node um, and consistently be able to decap if she's capped as well as just survive outnumbered for a little bit longer than the previous build did uh, so i actually really like this swap from from sorry and again i think that means that we should see quarantine crusaders going for those team fights a little bit harder just because they're allowing sorry to basically stay outnumbered for a little bit longer with this build swap and we see quarantine crusaders actually pick a very defensive spot near uh their their home node the bazaar anticipating a cross there from force of face roll but we will see them get in time to hold the archway there uh the middle node uh, from being capped up yeah, they're definitely expecting uh, the three-node play to come out from Force of Face. Or of course, they're completely correct in that assertion. And wow, Ori, they are not quite prepared, though. Sigadil already getting limited. The Glyph oh, the actually glyph denied to not enough health left over and poison, and meaning that will not be a revival there. And that is a very, very heavy blow to have at the start of the game. They're going to go for that res, but there's no way they're going to be able to get no. that. Force of Face will collapsing onto that with all of their might, dealing devastating damage 
uh, to that downstate body, able to eliminate them immediately. We're going to have to see the Crusaders disengaging this and trying to survive until they get their Revenant back from the grave. We do see actually a very nice decap coming out from Desar, but actually Andreas in a lot of trouble right now. Um, he's very, very low there, getting beaten down. They're going to try They're going to try and hold the out. I'm not sure about that. They've got to be so careful. Uh, actually, the Torment. Oh, he actually gets the... He's barely able to get the heal. And Sig has now returned, but Andre is a little bit out of stuff right now. He's got to get the hell out of there, and he might end up falling. However, with Sig off respawn, he is able to resustain uh, and at least uh, peel for his stricken teammate who's able to climb away for the situation. I think going to be pretty low as well, though. A nice pull there from Belzadar is going to bring her back down to the node. I really don't understand why Andre went onto the node and why they're so focused on contesting it. Obviously, it did end up paying off. We didn't see Forceful Face Roll get a kill, but that was a huge risk. And I'm not really sure is one worth taking. As you mentioned before, very nice decap there by Deathfire on Far Node. Unfortunately, we are going to see the decap coming out of the Bazaar as well. Sorry, unable to hold that node down. So far, Dostamatos' knockbacks apparently just a little bit stronger than the longbow for <laughs> the Shield 5. Able to get that node cleared a little bit harder. And we can see now his build working well. And again, Fefe going for the plus here into the Dragon Hunter uh, and leaving that team fight. We're going to see Deathfire. Obviously, part of the reason we see that plus is Deathfire is still at far. He's unfortunately losing that 1v1 out to Azerdom. Uh, and he is going to head over towards mid now, it looks like, as Azerdome and Stranger are going to be uh, able to hold the node down. But at the moment, we're going to see Red Team pulling just actually slightly behind by one point as Bizarre gets picked up there. Fefe obviously able to put enough pressure to get those models off. But again, middle node is going to be the focus here. It should be the focus here for 14 Crusaders uh, pushing into this node. We should see them really try to get this cap and hold down. Now, what is an important thing, and this could be a bit of a turning point in this game, is that we do now see the secondary mechanic, the Bell, spawning in just a few moments. And we're going to, I think how each team handles it is going to be very, very interesting indeed. Like we see Hero the Druid is going to try and stall this out, but Quarantine Crusaders are definitely going to try and force this, right? They're absolutely going to try and force this and surge. And then the map is actually fairly neutral right now, just one cap. Uh, in favor of the quarantine Crusaders, but if they're able to get the bell, that will be a massive lead for them generated in this game. Will be a hell of a lot of points, and of course, every single time you get the bell, you ring it a little harder next time and generate even more points. This is very much a snowball mechanic, a very team fight snowball based mechanic. And force of facial, they are really going to want to at least slow this down. And no, they're actually not able to get it. Uh, Hero already uh, kind of being denied away their force there, and the bell has now been captured by the quarantine Crusaders for 25 points. Yeah, and it will put them just ahead now by about 30 points or so. And I got to say, again, a little bit of a risky play, committing so many players there to that middle node, and it, it did seem to pay off, although Sig now going down. Oh, and a great knockback as well, but the glyph the comes glyph out anyways. Oh, Andre's able to get the glyph. He, I guess he actually avoided the knock, and he actually went down instead, dropping down himself, and that's going to be a really, really good glyph. And definitely committing so hard to that bell was very beneficial, I would say, for Gordon Crusaders. They do technically lose the map because of it, but it will put them in a bit more of a secure position, because if Force of Face we were able to split them up across the map, uh, across all four nodes instead of just three, it would have been a lot more difficult for them to hold on the map. So definitely a very good job there from Gordon Crusaders to get that bell. Still, they're going to have to get some nodes. We do see the Bazaar being picked up. Mid's still going to be uncapped. Pretty much this whole game hasn't been capped. Stranger taking a ton of pressure from the Sledge over the Bazaar. Sorry, though, might be going down. She's just able to continue to kite for now. There's just no kills coming out from Fefe. She's so, so very Ooh, low. Heal interrupted. Just able to save, but no, it's not going to happen. Might Fefe be resible. Res. We do see Andre coming in as well. That's very, very resible. We should see it come out. Andre here as well. But Fefe actually going to be very low herself. And Stranger going to be right behind her. They still haven't gotten the res. Shroud now coming out for Fefe. Oh, they the finally stone. get it. But Andre has taken so much pressure. Are they going to be able to turn it back around and find the kill on Sar Stranger? I don't know if it's going to happen. The longbow shots from Sorry. Able to bring him down. It actually ports oh, out. out of the Shadow oh, Refuge. No. That oh, is the shadow very is unfortunate. And that is going to be the kill picked up there by Force uh, by Courtney Crusaders on the V from Forceful Face Roll. A nice pickup. And even better, we do see Sig able to get the archway, the middle node there, capped up there for Blue Team. And that will be the double node finally picked up here for Quarantine Crusaders. Uh, and yeah, that, I don't know if you saw that, but the stomp was at, was it was half a second away. It was half a second away right there before it was able to land. So that was an insanely close uh, finale there indeed. But yeah, we do see uh, that uh, that uh, res coming through just in the very, very nick of time. And the bell is going to be up again. And just as Azadome dies too. And oh, I see this bell. The first bell is not too scary with just 25 points. Okay, but when it's 50 points, that's where things get absolutely terrifying.
uh, for Forceful Face. And I think they've, oh, especially with that kill on DOS, I think they're starting to feel the game slip away from them a little bit here. Uh, if Quarantigra says is able to force that bell and get that cap, things are going to start to look very, very dire uh, indeed for Forceful Facial. So Quarantigra says, I think they're very much aware of that. And we also, yeah, we see that big commit coming through. But actually, Feifei maybe going a little bit too aggressive. They're getting there too early. And I think Belzadar might be able to get that stomp. Does yeah. get the stomp. And that's a very, very nice kill. That will certainly slow down the capture progress uh, of the bell significantly for the Quarantine Crusaders. And again, actually, wow. All right, hold on. First, before I get into that, extremely nice 1v1 uh, by Deathfire, an actual decap as well over at the dock. And that's actually going to be a huge saving grace there for Quarantine Crusaders, just because they can they can give this bell up, I actually think. And, and I don't think that's a problem. And this is actually a really good call for them as well. Andre dying there would have just continued to stagger them. Getting that Necro kill was huge for Force of Facial, just because, again, it was what I was talking about before. They were able to continue to split up and put more pressure on, on all three nodes. I think Quarantine Crusaders would have been able to handle. But Deathfire actually saving them there. Unfortunately, he does go down at the end. But he's done his duty. He got that decap and the kill as well on Azure Dome uh, and, and definitely held them in the game. And Andre giving up the node there, uh, allowing them to hold onto the map, is definitely a lot better and a lot more significant than giving away 25 points for free. So, uh, very good call there. Nice discipline after losing the Necro as well, I think, uh, from Burning Crusaders. Yeah, it's it's very easy to greed, isn't it? Like, oh, we can still get it. We can still get the bell. It's so good for us if we're able to get the bell. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely. That was certainly the correct decision. Like, if they'd been, if they'd greeted for that, they could have got punished extremely hard. They could have lost more yeah. of their team. They could have ended up losing the map and kind of getting stuck there, right? And that's what they really want to avoid. If Forceful Face is able to just get kind of trap them and have them locked down, that's exactly what they want. Oh, Sig just barely able to get his oh, heal skill off there. Um, he says he has Glint heal as well after this, so he is pretty much okay, especially with Andre uh, to get him resustained too. And Deathfire now is a little bit, he's a little bit trapped there, but they do get a kill on Stranger and that should, there's no way they're going to be able to get that revive. And yeah, with Hero uh, getting eliminated there as well uh, by, I believe, Sari and Feifei, that's another uh, really, really good kill there uh, for the Quarantine Crusaders. And they've built themselves up quite a considerable lead lead, uh, I think, right now. Actually, quite a big lead. The Quarantine Crusaders right now up about 120 points and another bell is going to be up in about a minute's time, too. And, yeah, that is once again going to be another really big focal point. It could certainly come down to that. Of course, Force of Face are now possessing one bell of their own. Uh, they'll be able uh, to be able to grab 50 points. So if they're able to maybe uh, reverse the situation, kind of flip the, flip the script uh, on Quarantine Crusaders, then they can certainly come back into this game. But right now, I would certainly say they're, they are at a significant disadvantage in this match. Yeah, absolutely. Quarantine Crusaders is definitely, definitely looking a little bit better. And I think that is part, in part just because Deathfire has actually been involved in these fights a little bit more. So the fights have been going a little bit better for them. They're not splitting the Necro and the Tempest up as much as they were before, although they are still doing it a little bit more than I would prefer. Uh, but obviously, oh, Deathfire are actually going to go down here. A little bit of pressure from Delstamatos and Belzadar. Should be a pretty easy red for Sari and Fefe, and we are going to see that happen there. So the Thief is going to be able to get back into the game, and Delstamatos now is going to be potentially a kill here for Quarantine Crusaders, although we do see one of the Thieves rotating in, and it doesn't look like he's going to be taken out just yet. But again, I mean, holding down these double nodes, obviously we do see the technically fourth node on the map forced. And I actually really like this. We're going to see several more players, Azadome actually coming in now uh, towards the Bazaar as well. He's going to try and need a pressure but unfortunately Delstamato's going down I don't know if they're going to be able to get this go, oh, they no, might get it oh, he's going to go down they Ooh. do get it they actually get a kill here uh, on the but the bell the bell the bell's getting free capped oh no this will be really bad Stranger's trying to make it but oh he will be able to hold it long versus the Necromancer and the Tempest and that is a really nice kill on Deathfire but it's not really the, the worst kill in the world because we see the bell is going to get capped very very soon actually Stranger does go down but Hero arrives to at least all they need to make sure they get that kill they really need to go oh, for that oh he gets a knockback as well he might be able to hold on to this long enough for Bell's Darn and oh no he's actually going to continue to just keep pressure on them he's not going to be able to go for the res Still, they are going to be able to contest it. They get the decap at Bazaar. If they can get this cap picked up for them, that will be an additional 50 points, and they'll only be about 100 behind for Integral Staters. But the main thing to look at is the Necro goes down here, actually. Andre potentially going to go for a glyph into the water overload. No, he doesn't have the glyph for 10 seconds. He's not going to be able to do it. And that's probably going to be the kill confirmed on the Necro. And potentially the Ellie as well. Is he going to be immobilized in mist form? He's not going to be able to go anywhere. That stomp coming out now from the Druid, and that's going to be confirmed. The main thing here is is going to be if Quarantine Crusaders can hold on to the middle node because even with the bell cap, I believe one cap and now two caps as we see Bizarre picked up as well, it will easily win Quarantine Crusaders the uh, the game. Yeah, it should be 
pretty much in the bag, even if that bell comes through. As you say, it's not really good enough, and Andre doing a good job of stalling that, actually. The Druid not really going to be able to score a kill on the Tempest particularly effectively, and now with the Archway and the Bazaar both uh, completely locked down by Quarantine Crusades for the foreseeable future, they should be able to close out this game. We did see Sari get eliminated there from the plus from the Thief uh, over there, but Desfar pushing onto that third node onto the dock. Should be able to full cap that while Andre is able just to stall the bell, and Feifei also just going to stall that. Obviously, it is going to be a 1v2 uh, there for the Necromans into the Thief and the Guardian. And will eventually be a death. But Andre actually might have the glyph. Might be able to go for that res. Honestly, no. He doesn't, in fact, uh, have it. I think he may have used it to save himself. But actually, do get, does get the res. And yeah, that is going to be game over in about eight seconds from now. That is going to be it. Quarantine Crusaders are going to be able to advance onwards to the next round. Forceful face roll. But with quite an impressive showing, I think. Uh, are going to have to battle their way up into, uh, you know, from the lower bracket.